And next we have Michael Stefano, who was working with Sean in the summer. Hi, I'm Michael, and over the summer I was working with Sean for my research project, which was predicting the clarity of Michigan's inland lakes using Landsat. So, water clarity is generally measured with second disk depth, which is helpful because it provides best needs of measurements, and then with these clarity values, you can estimate the overall traffic state of the lake. And in Michigan, since or over the summer months since 2013, there have been about 22,000 measurements. And these two pictures here show where the measurements were taken. So the average lake clarity across Michigan is on the map here. And then this histogram just shows what the values are. So most lakes in Michigan have about three to four meters of lake clarity. And then in this northern area, that's where most of the most clear lakes are in Michigan. Uh, but second disk depths are limited in their coverage, however, because it's not practical to measure all areas. For example, Michigan has 6,525 lakes that are over four hectares, but only 314 of those lakes have data that have been submitted to Michigan's water monitoring program. And this map here is similar to the one above where the points just show where there are lakes, but then where there are lakes with data, but the blue areas show all the lakes in general. And as you can see, there's lots of areas where there's no actual secchi disk measurements. And this is where satellite remote sensing comes into play because we can use the data from satellites to predict what the clarity of these lakes are that don't have actual measurements. And you can do this with a variety of different satellites. Uh, I use Landsat, but it's also been done with MODIS and Sentinel 2. So my initial start for the project got my data from two different sources. The actual lake geospatial data was taken from Lagos, which provides lake data for the northeastern and the western US. And then the uh, second disk depths were taken from MI Core, which is Michigan's public water monitoring program. The first thing I had to do was join these two data sets together so that each point had a lake that corresponded to. And then with this new data set, I then filtered it for from 2013 to present because this was the start of operation for Landsat 8. And then from this point on, I was ready to start expecting uh, satellite data for these points. So for Extracting Landsat data, I use Google Earth Engine, which is a catalog of geospatial data from several different satellites. But again, I specifically use Landsat 8. And Landsat, provide, or Landsat takes image data based on um, surface likeness values at different wavelengths. And Landsat only covers one specific area every 16 days. So I only have to make sure that each of the measurements had similar conditions during the day to when the actual Landsat image was taken. I only kept the second disk points that were taken within three days of an actual Landsat image being taken of that area. And once I had those individual second disk points matched with a Landsat image, I then filtered those images so that there's only land area or only water areas remaining. So this map shows, or this picture shows what the Landsat image looked like after the filtering. So you can see that all the land has been removed as well as these areas with that are playing here over the water, that's where there's cloud cover, so it's as well. So there's only water remaining to take the uh, surface plumbing data from. And once these images were mapped with or linked to a Landsat image, then I took the spectral bands from seven different or seven different bands or took the surface plumbing from seven different bands. You can see these bands right here. The most important ones were bands one through four, which are within the visible spectrum. But then I also took the bands that exist within near infrared and short wave infrared as well. And those original 22,000 points were reduced to 2,700 after matching uh, all, the all the individual measurements to a Landsat image. And this is about one eighth of the original number. So at this point, I now had one big data set that included the uh, second disk depths and the surface flooding values for all seven of the bands to see what some of these numbers look like. And the next step here was to group all the data by the path and date. And so the individual, so the Landsat paths, these were the Landsat paths that go across uh, Michigan. These are paths 20 through 25, and they go vertically across. And so creating groups, so now I had one group that had each individual path on one specific day. And then I could then apply uh, stepwise linear regression to these. 
and this picked out which bands or band combinations were most important for predicting water clarity. And then once I had these two bands or band combinations picked out, I then applied a linear regression model to create an actual equation that would predict the water clarity for that group of measurements. And I compare these predicted values to the actual <coughs> measurements. So this slide shows an example of what one of these groups looked like. This was taken on July 19th of 2016 across the Landsat Path 22 and one here. And this graph shows the predicted secutus steps on the y-axis and then the measured secutus steps on the x-axis. And this line shows what you expect if it was perfectly lined up the predictions to the actual measurements. And the important things to note here were that for the lakes with lower clarity, they were generally centered around what the predicted or the prediction versus the measured values were at least centered around what you'd expect them to be. But as the lakes became more clear, they were more significant, they were consistently underpredicted. And this map here shows where each of these points were taken, as well as their error. So the larger dots had more individual error based on their measured versus predicted values. And the biggest trend here that's noticeable is that in southern Michigan, there's a little bit less individual error than the measurements taken in northern Michigan. And this could be because the lakes in northern Michigan might have been a little bit more clear. So those air, those areas were a little bit less precise in terms of what the value, the predicted values were. So I'll continue this research over the fall semester for my honors college senior project. And the next steps that I still need to do are to develop equations for all those different path group or path date groups. And then so I can create a predicted value for all the lakes with data and then apply that to all the lakes without data too. And then create one final map where I have um, predicted value measurements for all lakes across Michigan. And then finally, I'd like to thank ADRI and Sean for giving this research opportunity. <laughs> Uh, I didn't in this, but my going back here, my actual predictive values weren't as accurate as like, so I'm still playing around the equations and looking at what conditions should be removed. Because the actual the second disk measurements from the MI Corp, they included the conditions during the day, so I can't go through and eliminate like all conditions that aren't clear weather. So that may be like the next step to see if removing those will give me a little bit better of a correlation between the predicted and actual measurements. My first thought was the rainfall is important, but then when I was looking at your data, I would, I would think that it would affect the smaller lakes more. And it, given the fact that you had less uh, variability around the small lakes, I'm not sure it plays a little enough. Do you have any idea why the larger lakes would have uh, under prediction? So because the it's not necessarily larger lakes, it's the clearer lakes. So when they're more clear, the surface reflectance will be smaller values. So small differences will make a bigger impact for them. So that's why there's more variability between those two. Thank you. my question just now. Any other questions? All right, thank you.